What's up, family? Peace and blessings, man. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back in another video. This one's going to be about seven signs God is talking to you. Don't ignore. Don't ignore. Pay attention and listen because whenever God's trying to reach out to you, get your attention, get you to listen, that is a blessing because there's a lot of people out in this world, guys, they totally rejected God. God's not dealing with them, okay? But you being a humble one, you being the one who's looking for answers, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So it's important to, you know, take heed. And this is tough, guys. So the narrow path is not easy. Okay, listening to God, following him, being obedient to him is not easy. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. But because it's so hard, there's only few who are going to do it. That's why the Bible says few are chosen. Anyways, let's go. Let's go. The number one uh, sign, okay, uh, why God is speaking to you guys is that you're led to godly wisdom and knowledge, okay? And the Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So that's why I put that as number one. There's like a glare right here. I'll, I'll talk about that more. But number one a little bit closer okay number one is the fear of god okay this is number one the most important thing you're going to need uh, on your journey is the fear of god it's so important because the fear of god comes with departing from evil uh it comes with hating evil hating pride hating arrogancy um you know that talks about that in um proverbs chapter 9 verse 13 and uh, proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 so that is when God starts to speak to you. You start to gain more wisdom and knowledge because the Bible says that all godly wisdom comes from God. Okay, so when God's giving you wisdom, He's giving you knowledge, now you're getting the understanding. So now you can move accordingly. It's a lot easier to move when you have wisdom to move out here because if you're not walking and moving in wisdom, uh, you know, you could be doing foolish things. Okay, so that's one of the most important things, guys, being led by wisdom and knowledge. And as the Bible states in James chapter 1, it talks about if any of you lack wisdom, ask God and he will give it to you freely, okay? That's one of the most important things you need, the fear of God. And then that's, that comes with, you know, wisdom and knowledge. So uh, if you don't have this, guys, if you don't have this, it's very important to ask God for it, okay? Because without wisdom, it's tough out here, guys. It's really, really tough without wisdom, all right? So number two is, this is important too, guys. So a sin that's destructive, okay? So a sin that's destructive, okay? God will warn you many times before it destroys you, okay? So God is full. We all know God is full, full of mercy, right, and grace. But it talks about in Hebrews chapter 10 that, you know, we don't abuse the spirit of grace, okay? So, um, yes, you're under grace, you're under mercy. But the truth is that if you keep doing something, when God is trying to warn you, she'll let you know you have to, and it might not be a sin, it could be a person you're around with. It could be like a friend um, a relationship, you know, a family member that could also be destructed too because what are they doing? They're leading you to sin. Okay, they're leading you down the destruction path. Okay, so always keep that in mind when, you know, um, when there's a sin that's destructive or a person in your life is destruction, God will warn you many times. You know, how will he warn you? You may ask. I'm going to explain that more. Uh, but God will warn you. And you will know it too. Like, you will know it in your spirit. God will make sure that you know. Okay, so it's going to be your own post personal choice if you choose to not let that person go, not give that person up. But like I said, yes, God is full of mercy and grace, but eventually that has to run out. Okay, eventually you got to choose a side who you're going to pick. Okay, because a lot of people in these days are just abusing that word. They're abusing grace and mercy, not knowing that, you know, they're just they're just thinking that, you know, that's always going to abide by them. You know, and they're wolf, willfully rebelling and going against the most high. You just don't want to be in that situation. So, yeah, God will always warn you guys when it's, when it's a sin that's destructive, okay? Number three is, uh, which kind of goes on with number two, is spiritual warfare in your dreams, guys. Pay attention, okay? Spiritual warfare in your dreams, okay? So, there's many times uh, on my walk, like, um, when... Before I got attacked in the physical realm, I actually got attacked in the spiritual realm first, in my dreams first, and then it manifested in the physical realm. Like I tell you guys in my videos, that things happen in the spiritual realm first before it manifests in the physical realm. So pay attention to your dreams. And if you do have any dreams that are negative, uh, that are spiritual attacks, or demonic attacks, whatever the case may be, uh, you gotta instantly pray against that, okay? The kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of Satan, the Marines uh, Kingdom will have no dominion over me. Start praying those prayers out, man. Okay, because like I said, Satan, his job is to take you out, is to take you to go to hell with him. Okay, and that's miserable people. They want the same for your life. I don't want the same for your life, okay? We're called to be set apart. You know, we're God's chosen, so we got to move differently. We don't, we don't move like how the world moves, okay? So always keep that in mind, man. The spiritual warfare in your dreams, pay attention, pay attention, because a lot of times, and if, also keep this in mind too, if... 
you're not sober, you can miss out on your dream. So you can miss out on the spiritual warfare that's taking place on you. So always want to be sober too as well. All right. Number four is God will use a brother or sister to give you confirmations. Okay. So God will use a brother or sister in Christ, right? To give you confirmations. And that's just a body of Christ, iron sharpening iron. There is many times where God used a brother in Christ in my life, or even a sister in Christ too, to like tell me something that I already knew, but it's just good to have confirmation, you know? And there's nothing wrong with wanting confirmation and stuff because I guess I'm gonna talk about the next sign is, you know, we don't wanna be confused. We wanna be make, making sure we're not deceived. You know, so when, you know, when you're praying to God, God giving you confirmation, he will use, you know, a, a like-minded brother or sister. I mean, all throughout the Bible, guys, God used, he used a, um, a donkey, okay? Uh, God used a harlot to deliver the Israelites when they were about to be killed. So God uses anybody. God can use anybody he wants, animal, human, etc., etc., angels, okay? So um, this is where discernment comes in hand, too, because, yes, the devil has his messenger. The devil has his prophets, uh, his chosen ones too so you have to be able to decipher you know who is it coming from but best believe guys we're not walking in fear if you're doing the right thing you're walking with god you don't have to worry about that but like, but you definitely do want to use your sermon uh be test people's spirits and all that okay so that's number four number five is when god is talking when god is talking it gives you clarity and peace okay which i was talking about with number four okay you will never be led to confusion okay this is so important for you to know because there's a lot of times when God was speaking to me, I thought, okay, maybe, maybe, you know, I don't, I don't want to be led to confusion. And I, at that time, I had strongholds I was facing with, you know, I had demonic strongholds. When you have demonic strongholds, they could kind of, you know, get you to be confused, different doctrines. And then on top of that, you have, you know, religious spirit friends who are giving you the wrong information, wrong doctrine. So it can be very confusing. This is why I talk about isolation a lot in my videos, because sometimes you might have to do that for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, where it's just you and God. Yeah, nobody else, only you and him. Um, when I did that, I heard the voice of God a lot easier. And in my spirit was just fired up. Like I, I didn't even know what sin was at the time, you know? So it's very good to do that from time to time. Now I'm not saying you gotta be isolated all the time. You wanna have friends, you wanna have family, um, whether if you don't have one or maybe build one, you know, maybe you wanna get married and stuff like that. But that's very important to do. You don't wanna be, I gotta, I gotta make sure I add some balance to that when I talk about isolation because it's so important to have people that are like-minded in your life. Uh, you know, the Bible says there's a friend who's, who loves, there's a friend who loves, at all times, and there's a brother who's born for adversity. So, um, you know, you don't want to always be alone. I understand there's sometimes where you have to, but yeah. So when God's talking to you guys, you're always going to gain clarity and peace, okay? Now, of course, sometimes when God is talking to you and he's judging you, okay, because best believe God's not, you know, he's, always, he's not always smiling and happy all the time. The Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every single day in the book of Pro uh, Psalms, sorry, in the book of Psalms. So, Yes, you know, sometimes you could do something wrong, do something bad. Of course, God's going to be angry. But at the same time, you know, are you taking heed? Are you rejecting the wisdom? Are you are you rejecting the, the sin that's destructive that's going to destroy you? Are you, pay, are you taking heed? Because eventually the mercy and grace runs out, guys. All right. So you'll never be led to confusion. Number six is as you start to take heed to the voice of Yah, your spirit will grow stronger. Absolutely. All about obedience, guys. If you, this, this is the key. This is, I should have said this in the beginning of this video. Like this video, guys, if you haven't already liked the video, subscribe to the channel. But if you want to grow in Christ, if you want to grow through God, if you want to bear many fruits, if you want to be used or, you know, for the, for the kingdom, um, you know, all the good things, right? All the good things you, you could say. The number one thing you want to be doing, guys, is obedience, okay? The number one thing, obedience, okay? And how you may say, how do I be obedient to God? Number one, you keep faith in, in the Messiah, Jesus Christ, okay? Number two is you keep God's commandments, okay? Number three is you keep God's laws. You honor his laws. All right, number four is to help out the people in need, the people who are homeless, the people who don't have a roof over their head, um, you know, things of that nature. Help them out, okay? Uh, be a giver, all right? Um, you know, pray, of course. Pray to the Most High. You know, you don't want to be a hypocrite. Do You know, do that in private. Same thing with fasting, Okay, do things in private so God could bless you in the whole way, in, in, in public, okay? But the number one thing about being obedient, guys, is really and not living a life of sin, you know? Now, I understand the Bible does say that if a man says he's without sin, he's a liar and the truth is not in him. 
But when I say don't live a life of sin, not living a life of willful sin, not living a life of, you know, purposely going out and doing and re living in rebellion and disobedience and, and witchcraft and all that. Okay, so that's the number one thing you have to be doing, guys. Number one thing you have to be doing. Got to be obedient to the Most High. Okay, when you're obedient to the Most High, things are, you're going to grow, man. Your crops are going to grow. You're going to be blessed. And not only you, too. You're, you're, let's say if you have a wife or you have a children, they're going to be blessed, too, because you're the head. You're the leader. If you're doing what's right, everyone beneath you is going to be blessed, too. Okay, so always keep that in mind, man. That's the true wisdom. That's the true wisdom. Number seven is God will always speak to you through his word. Read your Bible. Yes, guys, absolutely. My Bible is in another room right now, but um, I, guys, that's how God speaks through, through the Bible, through the word. Okay, so God will also, will also always speak to you through his word. The King James Bible version. I mean, guys, that's that's so simple. And there's many times, guys, where I need I need I needed I needed to hear something, right? I needed to hear some motivation. Uh, I needed to hear some clarity. I needed to hear the situation I was going through. And guess what would happen, guys? A Bible verse would pop up in my mind. I can't make this up. A Bible verse, you know. Now I've read the Bible from front to back twice, two and a half times, almost three times. And, you know, I'm so glad I did that. And, and when I did that, guys, I isolated myself. I isolated myself for months. The first time I read the Bible from front to back, I isolated myself for nine months. The second time I read it, uh, I isolated myself for about six months. So I was, I was, I was disappeared from the world, guys. I was literally in my room all day just reading my Bible. But I'm so glad I did that, guys. That, that Those six months, those nine months of suffering. Uh, because that's what it is, guys. You're suffering. When you're by yourself and you're, and you're getting to know the Most High, you're gaining the wisdom, more wisdom, more grief, more knowledge, more sorrow. So you're, you're gaining all that, man. It's suffering, man. But you're suffering for righteousness' sake. Because my flesh, what does my flesh want to do? My flesh wants to do the opposite of what I'm doing. My flesh doesn't want to feed my spirit. My flesh doesn't want to live for God. No, it wants to do the opposite. So it's hard. It's tough. Especially if you got bad influences around you. Because evil communications will corrupt your good manners. Okay, so if you got those people around you, those, those voices in your ear, then in your flesh, you know. So it's tough. So, you know, sometimes you do got to isolate. Okay, so these are the seven signs God is talking to you guys. Don't ignore. I hope you guys got edified from this video. If you guys made this far, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment below too, guys, and share this video on all social media platforms. I love you guys so much. Y'all take it easy. Stay blessed. I'm out. Peace.